Fyodor Dostoevsky stands alone in his masterful ability to teach us things about ourselves we desperately need to know. He shows us how the truth to life is simple, staring you in the face, yet blocked by your own never-ending efforts to work your way through it. We construct ideologies, principles, religions, anything to tell us what to do and make life simple. We depend on these narratives so much that when the big one was collapsing, the narrative of God in the West, everybody was freaking out. When Darwin showed us that instead of being one step below the angels, we were in fact one very small step above chimps, people started to really struggle to find a grounding for the meaning of life and how to live it. Something that began to emerge, particularly in 1800s Russia, where Dostoevsky lived, was the concept of nihilism. This early brand of nihilism sought to focus our attention on our rational and powerful selves, saying that, in a world of mechanism and blind matter, all that really mattered was who was strongest and smartest. So normal morality simply didn't matter because it wasn't real. It is the beginning of a slippery slope into madness and a desperate struggle to find meaning. The age we live in now is arguably even more nihilistic in the sense that we feel very lost and without a central meaning. All just trying to find our way in a world throwing a million options at us. Perhaps in Dostoevsky, we can learn to be a little easier on ourselves and get in touch with what life is really about. So in this video, we will explore how he overcame nihilism and went even further to teach us about forgiveness, love, and the beauties of a messy existence. But before we do, don't forget to check out our members section after this video. You will find exclusive members only content, access to our discord and more. We are still a small channel and growing on this platform is pretty hard these days. So any support you guys can lend is really appreciated. At the end of the day, just watching, leaving a like and a comment means the world to us. So thank you to all who have and continue to support us. Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky is a gripping narrative that vividly illustrates how guilt only truly dawns on the protagonist, Raskolnikov, after he's committed his heinous act. It's a tale that passionately exposes how his insatiable ego and desires led him down the dark path of nihilistic ideas. Raskolnikov, a struggling student in St. Petersburg, is the embodiment of a man consumed by his own ego. Under the sway of nihilism, he convinces himself that he, as an exceptional individual, is above conventional morality. In his twisted logic, he believes that certain individuals possess the right to transgress societal norms if their actions serve a higher purpose or reflect extraordinary capabilities. With this twisted ideology as his guide, he commits a brutal murder, fully convinced it is a means to an end. But things don't go as planned, and he ends up having to commit a second murder when someone else arrives. Even his supposedly superhuman logic could not account for that. But the heart of the story lies in the aftermath. It's here that we see the true weight of Raskolnikov's actions bear down on him. Like a relentless avalanche of guilt and remorse, his passionate descent into nihilism leaves him morally unmoored and psychologically tormented. He is racked with paranoia and anxiety as he grapples with the grim consequences of his ego-driven crime. This is really the critical lesson of nihilism. In an age where old narratives are collapsing, it's easy to say it's all meaningless and just look out for ourselves. But Dostoevsky is trying to show us that there is still something about us that is more complex than just atoms and blind matter. Dostoevsky masterfully unravels Raskolnikov's inner turmoil, laying bare the stark contrast between his initial cold-blooded rationalization and the searing guilt that ensnares him afterwards. As he becomes increasingly alienated from society, his relationships crumble. Even those who care for him, such as his sister and the compassionate Sonia, find it increasingly challenging to connect with the man he has become. The heart-wrenching beauty of the story lies in Raskolnikov's gradual realization that his nihilistic convictions were a facade, a self-serving rationalization for his own desires. His guilt, like a relentless storm, intensifies as he confronts the enormity of his actions. It's a powerful illustration of the corrosive nature of ego-driven nihilism, highlighting the inherent conflict between our inner desires and the moral 
social fabric of society. In the end, Crime and Punishment serves more as a passionate cautionary tale. It lays bare the truth that guilt often strikes only after the desires have faded. Raskolnikov's transformation from a nihilistic egoist to a repentant soul underscores the novel's ultimate message. The dangers of pursuing self-interest at the expense of morality and the redemptive power of acknowledging our shared humanity and responsibility towards others. Whether you believe in God or that it is simply human nature, Dostoevsky shows us that what you need to overcome is not your moral constraints, but your own rampant desires and lack of self-awareness. To simply open your eyes to the world, to overcome yourself and let its beauty pour in. As we go into his next work, try to think about how this might relate to you or someone you know in your life. Nihilism is sneaky, and it can happen to regular people, not just egomaniacs like Raskolnikov. Now, we head into the heart of his masterpiece, The Brothers Karamazov, where we'll delve into themes of overcoming judgment, acting authentically, and the transformative power of forgiveness. You'll find this is relevant for our time as well. For us, most of the stories, the politics, and belief everyone used to just run on have pretty much faded away. We have largely come to see that most beliefs just come to serve someone else's interests at some point, and it's left us all a little lost trying to find ourselves in a world throwing a million new ideas at us at every turn. Our eyes are better focused close to home, at our relationships and day-to-day -day lives, and out there trying to pick the right side in some social conflict. On top of that, a lot of us still carry the baggage of the ideas handed to us by our parents and culture, and oftentimes we have commitments and beliefs we aren't even aware of, telling us who to approve of or not to approve of, you know, doing the thinking for us. In the Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky calls attention to just that. To truly appreciate Dostoevsky's philosophy, we must first understand the human condition as he saw it. In this novel, he presents a cast of deeply flawed characters who grapple with their own inner demons. He reminds us that we are all imperfect beings, prone to judgment and hypocrisy. But through his storytelling, he offers a chance to transcend these flaws and become more authentically human. The journey begins with the theme of overcoming judgment. Dostoevsky challenges us to confront our tendency to pass judgment on others. In the novel, we encounter characters like Ivan Karamazov, who embodies intellectual pride and judgment. But it is through his struggle and doubt that we see the possibility of growth. Dostoevsky reminds us that true wisdom comes from acknowledging our own limitations and being open to the perspectives of others. Something to note here is the pluralist nature of his character's paths. He isn't pushing some new or single way on everybody. He's showing us how the beauty of life lives in all rooms of the house, showing itself differently depending on who is seeking it. The character of Grushenka emerges as a compelling embodiment of the struggle against societal judgment. Her story unfolds as a poignant narrative of redemption, resilience, and the quest for genuine love amidst the relentless condemnation of society. Grushenka, introduced as Katerina Ivanovna's rival for Dmitry Karamazov's affections, is initially portrayed as a seductive and unconventional woman. Her provocative exterior and her willingness to engage in relationships that defy those social norms quickly brand her as promiscuous in the eyes of the townspeople. Gossip and judgment follow her every step, painting her as a morally questionable figure. However, it is crucial to look beyond the surface and delve into Grushinka's character. Beneath her alluring facade lies a complex and vulnerable soul, tormented by her own past mistakes and the harsh judgments of those around her. In order to insulate herself from the pain of these insults, she leans into the persona and only reinforces it, owning it. But tragically, she was never really this person at all. Grushinka's pivotal moment comes when she confronts her tumultuous relationship with Dmitry Karamazov. Their passionate and destructive love affair epitomizes the chaos and turbulence that ensues when societal norms clash with personal desires. The town's disapproving whispers and moral condemnation only intensify the emotional turmoil within her. Yet, despite the tumult, Grushinka's character undergoes a profound transformation. Her decision to forgive Dmitri and offer him redemption reflects her growing realization that societal judgment and bitterness only perpetuate the cycle of suffering. Through forgiveness, Grushinka embarks on a journey of self-discovery and growth, transcending the limitations imposed by that society 
that used to hold her down so easily. Another pivotal moment in her narrative is her encounter with Father Zosima, a wise and compassionate monk. He becomes a source of spiritual guidance and support for Grushenka, offering her solace and the opportunity to explore her own spirituality. This encounter underscores the novel's theme of faith as a means of overcoming judgment and finding that inner peace. In the novel's climactic trial scene, Grushenka's past actions are brought into question, and she faces the judgment of the courtroom. It is in this moment that her transformation is most evident. Instead of succumbing to the weight of guilt in society, she stands before the court, dignity and self-assurance. Her willingness to take responsibility for her actions, coupled with her newfound faith and capacity for forgiveness, ultimately leads her to redemption. Her path is a testament to the transformative power of forgiveness, self-acceptance. Through her experiences, Dostoevsky conveys the message that individuals have the ability to break free from the change of judgment and discover their own paths in a life of freedom, joy, and an open mind ready to live life the way it was meant to be lived. This version of Dostoevsky may be a little different than some you have seen on YouTube. While themes of genius and self-overcoming are there and are important, Dostoevsky's true task, the thing that ate him up, was mankind's loss of morality, love, and a common ground to stand on. There is no use in genius, no benefit in strength, and no worth in carving life out for yourself if there is no one to share it with in the end. The world can be anything we want it to be, but not anything you want it to be, alone. Once you come to see how alike we all really are, how we are all the same person living a different life, you might be able to live in Dostoevsky's world, a world where people can be vibrantly, passionately, themselves. <laughs>